Looks like we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another recreation programming session with Mr. Zosia. Let's make a little bit of announcement and officially start the stream live on Twitch. And what are we doing today on Twitch at television website? I didn't prepare my notes. God freaking damn it. But today we are parsing, actually, uh, parsing Lisp with Rust. So that's precisely what we're doing today. I'm going to give the link to where we're doing, to, uh, to, uh, like, where we're doing all of that, twitch.tv slash toting, and I'm going to ping everyone who's interested in being pinged. And there we go. The stream has officially started. The stream has officially started. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be parsing Lisp. Specifically, we're going to be parsing S expressions, right? So have you guys heard about S expressions? S expressions. Right, so it's basically the essence of the syntax of Lisp. Uh, right, so essentially it's the the format with parentheses and stuff, right? So, and you can think of S expressions as basically consisting of two things, the atoms and pairs, right? So, um, so names like X, Y, and Z are atoms, and uh, to form a pair, you put um, um, atom dot and another, uh, another atom, and you put it in parentheses. The chain of pairs is actually called uh, list, and it can be shortcut like this, right? So, uh, and why do we need all of that, right? We need it for our language that we're developing, right? So Turing language or Tula, uh, right? So let's take a look at it. So one of the expressions that it can uh, actually work with is going to be S expressions, right? So there's no particular reason for, for using S expressions. I just thought that they're going to be easier to parse. Uh, so as you can see, uh, here we have a bunch of S expressions that denote a state, uh, right? So also, uh, maybe I, you're going to be able to use S expressions to store in a tape, right? Because it's a Turing machine language, so it's a language for a particular Turing machine. Uh, and stuff like that. So uh, right now we do not support this kind of expressions at all, right? So we do not support that. We don't know how to parse them. And that's going to be the topic for today's stream. We need to learn how to parse as expressions, uh, right? So then we can put them in our language. Once we have them, we'll have to implement some sort of like a pattern matching in here. So we'll see if we'll have time to actually do that today. We'll see, we'll see. The winner gets T, that's for sure. Uh, by the way, I forgot to properly prepare for, for today's stream and open the, my list of subs and stuff like that. So I forgot to actually bring it up. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for all of the subs. Let's just wait for Twitch to load up. It's a horrible website. Absolutely freaking horrible website. I have no idea why I keep using it. I uh, should probably switch to YouTube already. Uh, so let me pop out this entire thing and close this horrible website finally. Thank you very much. I don't have to look at that ever again. So uh, let me take a look. Thank you so much, Nameless Blossom, for Twitch Pam the Culture. My message love you, Zosin. Love Rust. Love Lisp. So much love. Shish. I hate all of these languages, by the way, honestly. So I hate Rust and I hate both Lisp. I absolutely despise them, but thank you so much for Twitch Prime. So, FitoGrow99, thank you so much for your subscription with the message uh, Lips Hype. Uh, you probably meant Lisp, right? So, anyways, uh, uh, Mr. J Jakob, thank you so much for Twitch Prime. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, let's uh, go. Uh, let's uh, fucking go, my dear friend. So, uh, we already know how to, to tokenize shit, right? So, off screen, I've been basically working on this entire thing and cleaning things up. Uh, right, so one of the important things that we have in here is Alexa, right? So if I take a look at the Alexa itself, uh, well, let me find it. So it's a struct Alexa, here it is. So as you can see, it's a structure. It holds the source code that it is currently lexing. It also uh, holds the file path from where that particular source code was read. Uh, it also keeps tracks of the position and stuff like that. It's quite important to denote the location of different tokens and everything. Uh, so in here, we have a bunch of things in here. So we have methods like next symbol and peak symbol and so on and so forth. So we're going to be using this thing to parse as expressions. So I'm thinking, how are we going to be denoting, like how are we going to even describe as expressions? So let's create a separate module, sexper. So 
sex sex per module. Uh, so our language finally got a sex update. Uh, are you guys happy? Are you guys happy? Okay, so we're gonna have the sex update. So um, let's write some data structures. Let's write some data structures that describe as expressions. So the first thing we're gonna have in here is probably an atom, right? So this is gonna be atom. Uh, right, and within an atom, what you're gonna have, you're gonna have some sort of a name of the atom, right? So, uh, right, so atoms are just literally names. In our case, they are symbols, right? So they're basically symbols. Uh, we can actually just store it as the name, but one trick that I um, picked up from Jai is to actually, every time you need to denote the name of something that you're parsing, use literally like the token, or in our case, we for some reason call them symbols. And symbol requires the lifetime, so you have to put a lifetime in here. Uh, right, so, and that gives you the actual text, the actual name of the things, and location simultaneously. And you d will need the location where the atom was defined. It's gonna be useful in error reporting and stuff like that. So it's always going to be useful. Um, so, and do we need anything else in an atom? Probably not. Furthermore, I think uh, I would even say that this thing should be actually uh, enumeration and we should call it sexper, right? So this is going to be a sexper. And here we're going to have basically atom as a variant of sexper, right? So it's going to be just a variant of sexper. So then we're going to have, so if you take a look at the classical S expressions, by the way, let me put them in the uh, in the description, right? So for people who are watching on YouTube, potentially. Uh, I do plan to upload all the Tula episodes to YouTube, unlike with Epers. So I still haven't decided if I want to upload the Epers because I have over 20 episodes of Epers and I don't know how much time it will take to process all of them. So yeah, but maybe I'm going to just at least archive them on my hard drive and we'll see what, what I can do with them, right? So because it, I think it's kind of a valuable journey. Even though I was a tiny bit grumpy along the way, because people were purp purposefully trying to piss me off, right, to not let me finish the project, but fuck them, I finished the project, I actually shipped it, and I even made a cool-ass video about that, so fuck the haters. So even though I've been a little bit grumpy along the way, so maybe whatever I'd done in those episodes is still kind of valuable, right, so documenting all of that journey is, is still kind of valuable. We'll see, we'll see. Anyways, so uh, we could do, we could go with the classical S expression stuff. We can call it like a pair, right? So, or traditionally it's called cons for whatever reason. I think it has something to do with the specific machine that McCarthy was using to implement Lisp, right? And then here you would have like a, you know, first and second, or how they called it originally car and CDR, which I suppose the registers of that machine McCarthy used to implement Lisp, which is kind of like, it's kind of weird that people still use these names, right? So uh, th those machines probably don't even exist anymore, like nobody using them, right? So it makes sense to actually call them pair and first and uh, second, right? And in this case, we can basically make them as expression and NSA, right? So as expression, uh, and a say there we go uh, right and then since it's a self referential uh, structure self referential structure uh, you would have to do something uh, something special in here you would have to wrap them in a box uh, right so let's actually wrap all of that in a box like so uh, but I think it's kind of a it's kind of an overkill, right so internally when I parse this entire thing I would like to maybe represent it more concise and more convenient to use because if i have uh, a list i want to be able to just iterate that goddamn list so because of that i think it would make sense to maybe just do it like that where i literally call it a list and here i just have an like items and this is going to be a vector of s expressions uh all right there we go so i think that's going to be better uh, i think that's going to be better so you have an atom and then you have a list uh, there we go. So it, at least like internally is going to be represented like that. So I think it's a pretty good, uh, you know, description of this kind of expressions that we're going to be working with. Um, right. So maybe for the list also, it would be nice to have uh, like a location where it starts, because if you take a look at the S expression, it's going to be look, uh, looking like this. And if I need to report an error that located at that specific expression, I want to point at the open parent. So I need to know the location of that open parent. So maybe 
Uh, I want to keep it somewhere here, open parent, and it's going to be a symbol, right? As I parse this entire thing, I'm probably going to be skipping that open parent. So instead of skipping it, it would be nice to just store it within the list. So every time I need to do some sort of a reporting, every time I need to do some sort of a reporting, I can just get the location of that open parent and report it there. So I think, I think it's very useful, uh, right? Furthermore, I can maybe even do something cool, uh, right? So some sort of a generic method. Uh, right, which is the location, right? As you can see, S expression is a very much abstract thing. It can be either atom or uh, either list. But if I need to report a location, uh, I basically have to get that location for two different places, which is not particularly convenient. So it would be actually better to do something like this. Uh, right, so to do something like this. So essentially, if here we have an atom, uh, self atom, uh, name, the location is basically going to be the location within the name. Uh, maybe I have to take the uh, pointer and stuff like that. And in case of a list, I need to take the open parent, right? So I'm going to ignore everything else in here and I'm taking the location from the open parent. So something like that, you see? So, and then if I have just an abstract as, as expression uh, somewhere here, so as expert, uh, let sexpert, like so. Uh, I can just take its location easily like this and it's going to be just a reference to the location and I can easily report that. Uh, right, so like so, e print uh, right, so location, error, uh, blah, 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 there we go. So as you can see, it's going to be super convenient. Uh, I think it's going to be nice, it's going to be nice, it's going to be nice. All right. So another thing I need to be able to do, I need to be able to maybe parse s expression right so let's introduce some sort of a method part and it's going to be return the s expression right so it's just basically going to allocate the s expression and what we're going to be using to parse this entire thing we're going to be parsing it from the lexa right so we're going to take a uh, immutable lexa uh there you go and this is supposed to return that um you know s expression right so obviously the parsing of this entire thing may fail, so we have to return the result of this entire stuff, right? So to indicate that it may fail. Uh, anyway, so uh, let me maybe create a special separate um, executable. So here I have a pretty cool uh, file called, uh, called test lexa, which is a completely separate program which tests the lexa separately from the compiler. Uh, right, maybe we're gonna have something like a test uh, test sexper or s right which is separate which is separately test the uh, s expression parser uh, right so i think that's quite kind of convenient we can even take a look at how the test lexa works right so it's supposed to just provide the file and what it will do it will just lex the file uh, right so we, uh, we can take a bunch of examples in here for example the inc example which increments a binary number we can take this entire thing, right, and for example, feed it in there, uh, right, so this is going to be in Ktula, right, and as you can see, it just basically tokenizes and also breaks down the locations of each individual token, right, so we can actually go ahead and just iterate through each individual token and see how the Lexa works, which is rather convenient, right, so Emacs actually understands this entire stuff and it's, it's pretty convenient to just see how all that works and test the Lexa and stuff like that. Right, especially if you if we're going to be modifying the Lexa to behave it slightly differently, it's nice to have to just be able to test it. Uh, right, so on top of that, if we're going to have like test S expression, right, so I think we're also going to accept like a maybe file path or something, or maybe a command line argument. Maybe we're going to do that through the command line argument. Uh, right, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, right, I think we've got a sub which I missed a little bit. Uh, develop plan, thank you so much for Twitch Prime. Thank you for the message. I still hoping to see the tutorial for generic coding and not a language. Just watch any of my streams, just keep watching my streams because all of my streams are basically like a long tutorial on, you know, on just generally programming and not programming language. Right, especially when I'm switching the languages, you may notice that I'm basically still using the same tricks to achieve the results I want to achieve, right? So, and to be fair, I'm just treating the languages, different languages the same way, right? So, because I, I just like learned these generic tricks. So, whether I can condense it in a, in a like a 10 minutes video, I'm not sure, because all of these things are very much subtle. Um, so I, I don't know, like, even if I write, like, make such tutorial on generic programming, how is it going to look like? Right. 
So the, the problem with generic programming is that because it's like it's very much hands on, you cannot just talk about it. You need to show it. And I'm showing it every single goddamn stream. Just open this stream and watch me coding. Just like, what the fuck was I doing like before? I was just doing programming. It's just like, I don't know. And if I'm going to be just describing those things with words, they don't really mean anything. And people will just dismiss them because they don't see value. Oh, it's just like your opinion on how to do programming. But I mean, if I show it in a stream, people get bored or something. Like, I don't know. Like, nobody's going to watch that. Like, I've tried to do that multiple times. It's just like people don't give a shit. Um, right. Mm. Just watch my streams, like, I don't know. Also, program yourself. You can discover all of these tricks yourself, right? So you can also discover all of that stuff. Uh, right. <clears throat> so, uh, let me, let me see, let me see. Um, right, so let's maybe write uh, some sort of a, like a wrapper for, for a program, right? Which tests the, um, you know, as expressions. Um, so let me see, uh, print LN. I'm going to just write a hello world in here, right? Just to test that I can build this entire stuff. And I'm going to use my build this H, right? So I'm building Rust will build this H. Uh, here I'm going to just build, uh, sex per, uh, there we go. So maybe I should actually rewrite it with, uh, make files, right? Because with make files, it will at least cache, uh, all of these things in here and um right and maybe also build them in parallel but so far the, the program is not that big so i think i can yeah i, th I, I think i can just like use build this age uh, i think i can uh use build this age so let me take a look so this is going to be as expert uh as expert um right so we need to probably use the environment right so this is going to be environment args uh, right, and this is basically the args. There we go. So the first element in the args iterator. So here we are creating an iterator, right? So uh, the first element in that iterator is going to be the program name, uh, right? So it's kind of kind of important to get it out of there. Uh, args next, and we need to unwrap that. But maybe we're going to do expect, right? So just to have a custom error message uh, saying something. Program uh, name is like always is always provided right so it's kind of guaranteed by the operating system that when you run it the first argument is going to be the program name and uh if we're going to be parsing command line arguments we kind of have to get rid of this thing but i like to actually keep it for error reporting right because then later i can just use it in the usage message you probably saw that you probably saw me doing that uh right so here maybe i'm gonna return result um right which doesn't really say anything particularly interesting uh, right, and then here, so what we're going to accept, we're probably going to accept uh, the file path, right? So what we have to do, uh, so source path, right? So this is going to be the source path and args next. If we do have something in here that becomes the source path, right? So that becomes basically the source path. Uh, otherwise, we need to report an error. How are we going to be reporting an error? So I'm going to say print ln uh, error. Uh, no input is provided. So no input is provided. And then I'm going to just print the usage uh, program name. Uh, and this is going to be the input, like so. And um, after that, probably going to return error, like so. Uh, there we go. Okay, so we ha we've got the source path. The next thing we, we have to do, we have to probably read uh the source code of this entire thing like read to string provide the source path and then we just read the source path but and uh, here we just read the source but it can fail so let's actually report an error uh like so so error uh and let's just say e print e print ln um error could not read the file source path Right, and here we're going to return if an error has happened. Okay, that's pretty cool. So we have uh, source and source path allocated on the stack in main, and both of these things are going to exist for the entirety of this function. Right. So the way I implemented the Lexa, the way I implemented it, but the Lexa is that, let me find a new function. Uh, it accepts 
pointers or references. I'm, I'm sorry that I keep talking, uh, calling them pointers, but that's what they are, right? So, um, so it accepts the references to source and file path, and it doesn't clone them. It doesn't copy them, right? So it relies entirely on these two things living longer than the lexer. Right. And then they're going to be living longer than the Lexa because they are defined in a, the biggest scope, right? The main function, essentially. Right. So if we want to construct the Lexa, what, what we need to do? We need to do Lexa new. Uh, we're going to take the source and then the source path. And uh, that gives us the Lexa that we can then pass to the parser and stuff like that and uh, modify it and, uh, you know, parse it and everything and it doesn't clone the source code or doesn't construct new string or anything like that it works entirely with uh with the references right uh so yeah the, the biggest scope is static whatever you, you know what i mean uh so let me actually see uh as expression all right so as expression parse we have to put alexa in there right and we probably also need a way to maybe print that as expression right so this is going to be s expression uh right and so maybe we're going to have some sort of a function like a dump right i don't want to implement format or anything like that uh we, we could actually implement format and just like literally print it as it is uh yeah so but i want to see like the ast like the actual structure in there like uh, yeah, I think it would be better to actually call it like dump, right? So let's, let's call it dump, uh, right? And in here, I'm gonna do dump, uh, right? And it's going to be something like this. Uh, there we go. Um, okay, so I suppose I want to make all of these things like sort of public, right? So because they're gonna be very much useful, uh, right? So, and then here, I also want to make the S expression module part of this entire thing. And I'm going to just use S expression like this. Also, Lexa should be also, uh, you know, part of this entire project. So there we go. Okay. So let's try to build this entire thing and see if it's going to build or not. Right. So obviously there's a bunch of things in here. Uh, visibility qualifiers are not permitted. Okay. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, just a syntactical thing. Uh, symbol. Okay, we don't have symbols, I suppose, primarily because symbol is a part of the of the Lexa. So I wonder if I can just like use Lexa like this. I'll probably have to do something like this, but I'm not 100% sure. So let's, let me actually see. Oh, no, that was actually fine, probably. Uh, yeah, so, okay, that's cool. Uh, we probably want to do maybe... Um, uh, let me do something like result. Honestly, maybe I can actually, you know, collapse all of this entire stuff like though, like, like that, right? So, and this is going to be result, uh, result, uh, t like so. Okay, what else do we have? All right, so what's going to be the next error? Uh, okay, can I just like uh, get the result from the, not really self, but super? So can I just do it from the super? Apparently I can. I think I think I can. Okay, so method dump um, found for enumeration. Uh, I think I forgot to put uh, self in there. I think that's what happened. Uh, right. I forgot to put self in there. Happens. Shit happens. Shit happens. And that's about it. So there's only warnings of unused stuff. Uh, some of them are legit. Like for example, this one. Like I have an error, and uh, I never actually used it. So I think I think I should use it. I think I should, in fact, use it. Uh, right. Let me let me now try that. So this is going to be build. Uh, we probably need to put some sort of S expression somewhere, right? So let's do sexper txt, um, or maybe I don't know. Uh, let's call it list sexper, right? So this is going to be an extension. And in here, essentially, we're going to just put one, two, three, four. Uh, maybe maybe even something like that, right? So this is basically what we are trying to see in here. And I'm gonna just go with uh, sexper, like test sexper, right? So we'll just try to run it. And as you can see, ah, cat fucking damn it. Okay, can I uh, just, yeah. So th the problem here is that it prints this extra shit that annoys the hell out of me, uh, right? So, because I'm using Rust incorrectly, right? right? So that's, that's the main problem in here. I'm just using Rust incorrectly. 
Uh, right, so let's just rename it to start, like so. So then we can get rid of this entire step. Uh, right, so it wants to have, um, you know, exit code, right? So here is the exit code. Uh, so it's a process uh, exit code. There we go. So it's a process exit code. What else do we have in here? Everything seems to be Gucci. Everything seems to be a Tamaguchi. And there we go. Look at that. Look at that beauty. Right. So everything is perfect. So let's put a list in there. Uh, right. So and something is not yet implemented, which is understandable. So if we take a look at the where it is located, so it's 16. Parsing this shice is not implemented. Parsing this shice is not implemented. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, we need to skip that get them first open parent. Right, as far as I know, in the main program, there is a function called expect symbols, but it's in the main compiler, so it's not shareable across all of our executables. I think we need to move this entire shit to the Lexa, right? It's, it's a very convenient function. It accepts the Lexa and expected names, and it returns you this symbol if... Uh, the name of that symbol is one of those names. Otherwise, it will fail uh, saying that expected one of those symbols. To be fair, this looks like it could be a method of Lexa. Honestly. Yeah, it, it, it actually looks like it could be a method of Lexa. So why, why is, is this not a, a method? So let's go ahead and just do that. Make, it, make that a method. Uh, all right. So implement. So Lexa. Where is the mother flipping Lexa? Uh, here it is. So maybe I'm going to actually go down there at the bottom of the Lexa and put it somewhere here. Right. So here we can expect the symbols. So in here we can just say this is the self. Right. And then we'll have to do a little bit of a compiler assisted refactoring. Uh, right. But we can easily do that. We can easily do that. Okay, so let's try to recompile this entire thing, uh, right, and take a look at the compilation errors. Errors. Uh, all right, so we don't have to put NSA in here, which is fine. What else do we have in here? Parse symbols. Oof. Uh huh. So parse symbol. That is interesting. Um, so it's a separate function. Why does it even exist? Right. So why can't we just call next symbol? Right. Why can't, why can't we just call the next symbol? Uh, let me open parse, uh, parse symbol. Ah, I see what's going on. It reports that expected symbol, but reached the end. Of, okay. Usually I don't have to have this kind of check because I make the end of the stream as kind of a symbol. But we here we have a different sort of system of tokens, so this is kind of necessary. Can I also make it a method of Lexa? <laughs> Sounds like a good idea, honestly. Just like, also make it a method of Lexa. Why not? Who said you, you can't do that? We can do that. Uh, so you can just, you know, uh, next symbol, um, pick symbol, and here you can parse symbol, which reports an error and shit. Like, yeah, it's kind of, kind of weird, but I mean, it will work. Uh, right, so it will work probably. Uh, so this one also has to be public, by the way. And let's go to the rest of the compilation errors. Let's go to the rest of the compilation errors, my dear friend. This has to be self, by the way. Uh, right, and now every time I refer into Alexa anywhere in here, I have to actually refer to le uh, self. Uh, like so, boom, boom. Next compilation error, please. Thank you very much. Right, and in here, so instead of expert, uh, I have to do self parse symbols so that's what i have to do in here okay so and the result in here okay i see honestly so mm, so that annoying result honestly that annoying result what if i just say use uh, super result and every time you create an executable you must provide a custom result that is visible this is kind of an interesting requirement uh for the reusable module but i mean that's fine i guess i guess that's fine so okay what do we have in here right for the aha uh -huh. 
So we need to do use std fmt write or something. That, that's what we have to do. Or is it io write? I don't remember, honestly. Whatever. Okay, so now here we have Alexa and this became a method, right? So now I'm expecting a very specific symbol. Look at that syntax. Isn't that boggers? Look at that super result yeah exactly so you have alexa you say i expect these symbols and it returns the result and also rep uh, reports an error so you can put a question mark in here and uh, after this line you can be sure that that previous thing was only uh, curly brace and if it was not it was like properly error reported and everything that's very convenient i really like this like a question mark i think here like has a similar system with errors right but without the bullshit uh, right, so I think also Zeke has something like that, but I don't remember anything from Zeke, honestly. Uh, right, I don't remember anything from Zeke. Question mark is essentially, it will return from the function if the uh, result of this function was error. Right, so it basically automatically short circuits. Uh, right, so if this thing errored out and you put a question mark in here, it will just return it out of the function and also return an error. Right, it's sort of like a controlled exception, but you explicitly say, okay, so these things should propagate further and further and further. Uh, right, so instead of doing constantly if f equal new, not equal new, that right? Uh, so you you don't do that, right? So they basically solve the problem that Go has, right? So yeah. In Go, you have to do this kind of bullshit, like in, in Rust, like you don't have to, but there is a little bit of a Rust specific bullshit in here with results and stuff like that. I, like in here, I think it's a little bit easier, uh, right? So maybe it's the same in Zeek. Again, I don't remember anything from Zeek, so. Uh, okay, so parse symbols, yeah, okay. So we have to do something interesting in here, chat. We have to do something interesting. So let's do a little bit of a Emacs magic, a boom 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 can your beam do that can your beam do that stinky beam can it do any shit all right look at that shit all right so let's continue uh, compilation uh so this is going to be alexa and a boom uh what else do we have in here so this is alexa uh all right I think there was like an extension for multiple curses for him. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so I could have done a similar thing in here, but whatever. <laughs> uh, even Visual Studio Code can do that. Bruh. Bruh. Yikes. Yikes. Imagine using Vim in 2024. Uh, Alright. Okay, we've got it. We've fucking got it, mate. We've fucking got it. So now, wh why I was doing all, all of that, right? So then I can do something like Alexa expect symbols right so expect symbols and i'm specifically expecting the open parent right that's what i expect uh, specifically expecting and i can actually put it in here right though it's not the correct way to do that honestly right because this function is supposed to parse either list or atom right so yeah what we have to do we just have to parse the symbol right so we just have to parse the symbol so we're parsing the symbol like any symbol. Uh, there we go. So let's put it like uh, like a symbol in here. And depending on what that symbol is, right? So depending on what that symbol is, depending on its name, we're going to be doing different things. If it's an open parent, that means we are parsing uh, essentially a list, right? So we're going to put it to do in here, uh, parse list. If it's something else, if it's actually anything else, that is going to become the atom, right? So we have to do OK. Uh, self atom uh, and this is going to be basically name symbol right so this is going to basically become name symbol uh, in case of a list uh, right we can keep that symbol as sort of like the open parent uh, like that we're going to put in here for error reporting purposes and then what we have to do we have to iterate in a very interesting manner, right? So we have to iterate in a very interesting manner. Let me think how we're gonna do all that. While we still have something in there, right? While we still uh, have some stuff. Mm. So how I'm gonna be even doing that, all of that? Um, so I, I don't know how to go that. So I already have a word symbol, but I don't wanna uh, like lose this one, uh, right? So this one is gonna be symbol two. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's gonna be symbol too. There's nothing you can do about that. Like I'm not creative today. I have symbol. I'm gonna call this symbol one, right? And this is gonna be symbol two. And there's literally nothing you can do about that. It's gonna be like that in the source code, uh, right? Mm -hmm. So and uh, depending on what that symbol is, right? So we pick in into that symbol, and if that symbol, right? If that symbol. Uh, is closing pattern right so we need to stop uh, and get some help right so we need to stop this entire endeavor um, so and I suppose afterwards 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 uh, what we can do so we know for a fact that this entire thing like has to be closed in pattern so that means we can quite easily just say expect symbols uh, like this and I suppose it's going to be fine yeah boy we can do that all right so while it's not co uh, close and parent we can just basically parse uh, like an element right so this is going to be element how do I call them items okay so let's actually call it item then uh, right and I'm recursively parsing sex per right I'm recursively parsing sex per look at that uh, right, and I probably also need to create the item, uh, items, right, so this is going to be vector of items, like so, uh, and I'm going to be basically taking this thing and I'm going to be pushing it like that. Honestly, it would be nice to maybe just like go ahead and align this entire shit like so, yeah, there we go, so we'll get the items. And afterwards, uh, what I have to return, I have to return the list that we just successfully parsed, right, so this is going to be a list, then we have an open parent which is going to be the symbol one right so this is going to be the symbol one open parent and then we're going to have items and there we go i think we managed to parse as expressions i think we managed to parse as expressions i just realized why the fuck do i need dump if i can just like have debug i didn't think about that uh right so i could could have done just done something like this uh derive debug debugger wugger right and then in the test sexper test the sexper uh, what can I do? Uh, I can just print it, right? So print ln um, sexper with a question mark and shit. Look at that. Look at that chat. Look at that. Okay, what the fuck is going on? Okay, so name, no field name in sim. Ah, this is because I forgot a question mark. Okay, so why are you pointing at that shit? Uh, okay. Mismatched types. Are you sure? Are you motherfucking sure? Did I forget some shit? I feel like I forgot some shit. So expected. Uh huh. Ah, I see. Extra to do. To do. I'm sorry. <laughs> I had too much coffee into there, okay? Uh, all right. So uh, let me let me see. Uh, so this is gonna be um, yeah. So let's go ahead and expected symbol but reach the end. Fuck you, leather man. Fuck you. Like, how did I reach that? Uh, so, yeah. Expect a symbol, but reach the end of the input. Uh, like a number of them. Right, so it should not happen. It should not happen. So we just, because we're parsing only a single sex per. We're parsing only a single sex per, not trying to parse, uh, to parse multiple sex pers. So it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, maybe because okay, let's try to tokenize this bit. Uh, let's try to tokenize. I think I know what the fuck is going on. Chat, I think I know what the fuck is going on because I did a fucky wacky. Like, what is this token? Can anybody explain? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yikes, uh, fuck you, fucking yeah. Okay, so essentially, I implemented tokenizer off screen. Uh, all right, so if it encounters open parent, it just basically 
unsticks it like that so it kind of works but i coded it in a such a dumb way i coded it in a sense that i'm looking for a prefix and if prefix is this thing i uh, emit as uh, emit that thing as a token right so which doesn't work for this thing because um the closing parent is never like a prefix of this entire thing so is it, i don't fucking know <laughs> um right so okay let, let me show you how how all that works let's take a look at the freaking lexa freaking like i'm telling you lexa is such an unsolved computer science problem it sounds simple it sounds simple once you get, go into implementing alexa it's such a freaking rabbit hole it's insane so many different situations different cases and stuff like that you can spend like your entire day fiddling with this freaking thing um next is just a regular expression what do you mean maybe if you use just like a flex or something like that but then just... anyways whatever um so let me let me see right so here i have like a list of special characters that you're supposed to just sort of like unstick from the rest of the things and as you can see here, I'm just like looking at this specific prefix and I'm just like doing it like that. What I'm thinking is that what if I just take this piece of shy soon and just make it a global shit, right? And I'm going to say something like const special. Yeah, let's call them special. Let's go to the completioners. Uh, all right. So I want to share them. Uh, right. So, so this is a special. Uh, I wonder how can I... Yeah, I also have to make it so something like this. Is it going to work? I think it's working. I think it's working. There we go. So um, we have a very interesting function strip strip while. Yeah. How do we use that? How do we use this function? Essentially, when you are about to chop a symbol or to chop a token, right? So we're stripping each individual character while it is not um, a white space what we have to also do is to check whether it's not white space and not special you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about i think you fucking know what i'm talking about i know that you know what i'm talking about so uh we need to do something like this does it have like contains uh i think it has find right where we can just do y and we can say y uh is equal to x right and then we can do something like is sum um maybe while it's not white space and non not special is none yeah and i think that will work actually uh, do not ignore the chat, please. Watch me doing that. Okay, so something is wrong in here. Uh, so maybe we have to do it eater. Uh, all right, so... Ooh, this one is interesting, actually. This one is freaking interesting. Because these special mother flippers are strings. Maybe they have to be characters. Maybe they have to be characters. We just think. We just think. We just think. There is a slice contains. I don't believe you. Oh, you just used. Okay, I believe you. So let's <laughs> rust up, dog. Uh, let me see. Eh, fuck. Uh, let, me, let me see. Slice contains. Okay, so we can use that actually. But in any case, we, we need to actually replace them to, to characters or something like that. Um, okay, so special uh, contains x. Oh, by the way, contains accepts. It even can uh, uh, accept it by a pointer, so I don't have to do this shit. That's perfect. Thank you so much, Jesse. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so, but that will require a little bit of other refactoring, just a tiny bit, because we ch changed string to character and stuff like, yeah. So now, like, how do I even fucking do that? Like, I'm not freaking sure, like, I'm stripping the prefix. Is there any easy way to convert character to, to 
slash str. Probably there is not. There is not an easy way to do that. Fuck me. Mm -mm. Fuck me. Yeah, there isn't. isn't. Uh, so that means we have to change this thing. Uh, strip prefix. Uh, can we strip char? Uh, uh, which basically checks whether that uh, char uh, like this. So it will be the boolean. Uh, mm -hmm. So um, I wonder, by the way, so if I take a look at the str, so strip prefix. Uh, so what kind of implementations? Of prefix do you have because I know that the prefix is a very much abstract thing which is a pattern right so it is in fact a pattern uh, I don't see so who it's a trait who implements that trait show me who implements that oh my god thank you so much oh oh okay so that means maybe I can actually change this entire thing to accept p uh, as a prefix right so where p uh, right is gonna be a pattern like this and where do i get that pattern from so what what's that is it even like a public thing can i get it somehow right so can i just say uh something like this is that something i can do that would have been cool uh, so it's experimental. I don't think it's experimental, right? Or is it? So fuck me, it's actually experimental, and declared lifetime. Okay, so maybe I have to say NSA, uh, right? So uh, yeah, so this has to be also P. Please don't freaking tell me. Um, freaking rust, like. <clears throat> Why every time I find something actually fucking useful in this goddamn fucking language, it's fucking unstable, it's fucking nightly, fuck that shit. Like it's... Can you just release the language already? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> okay, so um, I think we can we can work with that. Whatever, 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 whatever. Uh, we can just copy paste both of the functions or something. I don't fucking know. So strip. Uh, let me let me go back. Let's go back. Fuck Rust. Don't program in Rust. It's horrible language. Uh, okay. So what we can do in here? Uh, might as well actually. Yeah. Whatever. I I'm gonna literally copy paste this shit. This is what Rust developers want you to do. Like for real. This is what they want you to do. Um. So, and uh, what's funny is that I can just like go ahead and advance location for the prefix in here because it's a single thing anyway. Um, yeah, so street prefix. All right. Uh, so I can also call it strip char prefix. Look at it. Mm -mm. So, wait, are there no ways to use nightly features in a project? Who do you think I am? To use nightly features, nightly unstable shit in my project. You think I'm some sort of a, like a soy Rust developer who gets excited every time a new feature released and then I'm gonna use nightly for this new feature? No, fuck that. Give me stable shit. Give me the good shit. Okay? Who the fuck do you think I am? I'm a serious software developer. I want my project to actually work. Okay? Um, <clears throat> again, too, too much coffee, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm usually not like that. Um, so, uh, what do we have in here? So, this is supposed to be like that. Uh, right, so what do we have in here? Advance, expected char, but found... Okay, so it actually wants this kind of stuff, like, all the time. Um, uh, so, in here, um, yeah, let's go. Um, honestly, like, and now I have to make it a symbol. So now that means I have to turn it into, 
Uh, fuck. I still need a quick, easy way to turn a char into str. Chat, chat. This fucking kills me. Why I decided to use Rust for this project? Can anybody tell me? Was I dumb? I think I was just dumb, bro. I think I was just. I wonder if I can just like use. Oh, by the way. Um. So why the fuck am I doing it like that? So first of all, it has to be char prefix, okay? It has to be char prefix first of all. Uh, second of all, I think maybe strip char prefix must return um, that prefix somehow. That would have been cool, I think. I think that would have been cool, honestly. But the strip prefix returns like just a boolean, right? So it doesn't really give us because like it assumes that. Yeah, fuck me. Okay. Um. Mm. <clears throat> Mm. Just a second. Do you know how str works? Or let me ask you: uh, are, are you English speaker? You native English speaker, and you think that everyone uses ASCII, right? So. This is not, you, you can't just do that because str is actually, uh, it's a sequence of bytes. It's a UTF-8 string, uh, right? So yeah, you can't just do that. So you have to, yeah, you have to do this shit that people put in the chat. Yes, you have to do this shit. Uh, right, so let me think how we're gonna do, be doing all that. So stripping the prefix, right? So we already stripped that prefix, but that didn't, uh, really help us, which means that the, the strip in the prefix like this is not even like a good thing at all, right? So it's not even a good thing at all. So I suppose what we want to do, uh, we probably want to actually go on the level of char indices, right? Oh my god, uh, the, the, like the worst thing, like char indices, so that when you have to fuck with these shits, right? Uh, right, so the char indices, and essentially what I want to do, all right, so, but I mean, if it doesn't start with the shit, I don't want to do anything with that. So that means uh, I want to just check that this thing starts with that specific prefix. Then I want to take char indices, all right, so I want to take char indices. Um, I want to skip the first character. I'm skipping that shit. I'm literally just ignoring it. Like, fuck that shit. So, and um, afterwards, I want to take the next index. Right, so, uh, indices, next. And here is the thing. Uh, it could be, uh, like empty so that means it could be the last character so that means i need to unwrap or this thing and in terms of or what i'm going to be using i'm going to be using like the source length essentially right i'm going to be using the source length and that basically gives me sort of like the end right so that gives me the end uh and afterwards i'm reassigning source um starting from end like, like so right but I also need to return uh, the the prefix, right? So let's actually do something like option uh, str. So I'm going to say S and say str uh, and say str. So advanced delocation. Let me close the chat. Uh, right. So uh, we need to do something like a result source uh, from something like this, right? So we have that. And in here, we're going to return some result. And here we're gonna return none. Right, so something like this, probably, right? So something like this. Um, essentially, so we take the char indices, we're skipping the first one, uh, we take in that one. If it doesn't exist, we do that. We obviously advance the location, right? So we obviously advance the location, that's kind of important because otherwise the location is not gonna be advanced. Uh, and after that, we're gonna have something like this. And what's funny is that I don't think I use this function anywhere anymore. 
Uh, right, when it, oh, I, I do use it for, for the comments and shit, so that means it's going to be useful. Okay, so let's try to compile this shit and see how it goes. I probably fucked it up. Uh, Alright, so what you don't like in here, mind the friend. Uh, so it's kind of, it has to be self. Um, right, so and in both of the cases, I probably have to do something like this. Yeah, there we go. What else do we have in here? What else do we have in here? So expect it. Whoa, what the fucking whoa, what the whoa. Oh, yeah, because it's actually char indices returns the pairs. So, and uh, the index is actually the first element. So, what we want to do, we want to actually map this entire thing, take that goddamn freaking index and just like put it in here. There we go. So, can I just actually make it look like that? Does it look good? Does it look Gucci? Does it look Tamaguchi chat? Tell, tell me, do you like it? Right, so uh, mismatched type. Okay, so, and this thing is going to be let name, and it just fits perfectly in here. Look at that beauty. Look at that beauty. In fact, maybe with the strip char, I can kind of do a similar thing. Strip, the strip prefix, right? So, but the problem with the strip prefix is that it returns you the strip thing instead of like whatever you stripped. So, there is a little bit of a problem with convention in here. So, fuck. Uh, anyway, whatever. Uh, this one has to be mutable, of course. First try, first try, mother flipper, first try, first try, mother flipper, first try. Okay, so let me, let me fucking see. Okay, so what do we have in here? Oh, fuck, shit, fuck, damn, what the fuck happened? So it didn't advance it at all. So that's what happened. Uh, I suppose that's what happened. All right, so I'm wondering what exactly happened. So let me try to see. Let me try to see. So what if I... Um, I can actually maybe comment it out. Uh -huh. So that's fine. So what if I put this kind of thing? Is it going to work? Uh, how... It didn't work at all. So I wonder why and I wonder how. Ah, char prefix. Okay, so the source starts with the prefix. We established that. We take the char indices and we skip the one, right? So then we take the next one and we take that index or otherwise we take the end of this thing. We obviously advance the location, that's fine. So then we take in the result. So I do not quite understand what's wrong in here. I do not quite understand what exactly is wrong in here. Uh, and I would like to maybe make a small break and figure it out after the small break. Yeah, so let's make a small break. Uh, and after the break, I'm going to figure it out. Um, so, what the fuck is going on? Can anybody tell me why this shit doesn't freaking work, bruv? What the fuck? Uh, so, what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to chop this thing. I'm iterating through the special characters, right? So, I'm iterating through the special characters. And, uh, right, so I'm trying to strip a character, right? So I'm trying to strip a character. If this entire thing starts with that, if this entire thing starts with that, uh, I know that it's going to be fine. Um, all right, so maybe one of the things I can try to do. So let me take a look at this stuff, all right? So let me take a look at this stuff. Uh, so special is not public. Maybe I can make it public. Mm, right, so where is the test lexa? So here we did that, here we uh, tokenized and everything. I'm gonna comment it out just for now. I just wanna print uh, the entirety of the source code. Right, so this is gonna be just the input input source. It's gonna be just the input source. Uh, right, am I at the right place, honestly? So let's rebuild everything in here. Uh, am I at the right place? Okay. Okay, so that's the source code, essentially. That's the source code, essentially. Test Lexa. So what I want to do, I'm importing everything from the Lexa. So if I iterate through everything within the special, right, so everything within the special, and then I'm going to be just printing that. Uh, right. So let me see. Right, so here are all of the special characters. So I have a strange feeling that maybe something with starts with doesn't work correctly. Right, so source, uh, right, starts with, right, starts with X. All right, and if, uh, let's actually maybe even print all of that stuff. Uh, right, 
So this is going to be input. And here I'm going to just put it like that. Uh -huh. I just want to see. Um, so let's do it like this. So maybe in the build, I'm going to get rid of those things. Uh, it didn't print shit because I'm building incorrect thing. Yeah, none of them start with that. None of them start with that, which means when I'm trying to chop a symbol, when I try to chop a symbol, it will fall through and it will go here. And while this thing is not and not special. OK, I found. So I, th I think I found. It. So I found the problem. So I, I was thinking that the problem maybe is in there right but the problem was down there okay so but maybe there is still some problem somewhere there right so but i think i found one of the problems uh all right so what else do we have an eh, em fucking emacs react faster react faster uh okay so we've got this shice and as you can see it is, seems to be working it seems to be twerking look at that the only thing i need in my life is just a small break to make a cup of tea. How about that? Mm -mm. Have you heard of React OS? Yes, I have heard about it. It's sort of like a, um, an attempt to re-implement Windows. Um, so I don't know, like, I don't really hear about them that much anymore. So I don't know if that project is alive or dead or what, what's going on with it. Um, okay, so we've got these things. So, pretty cool. Uh, now, can I try to parse the as expression? You know what I'm talking the as expression. Uh, so, I'm going to do just sexper and uh, let's go. And we parse the as expression. We unironically parsed the as expression. How about that? Um... You mean I can finally afford to uh, use Windows and stop using this Linux garbage? I think you can. Let's actually Google that. React OS. OS. So front page React OS. I'm actually surprised how uh, Facebook didn't sue them for, <laughs> I don't know, for trademark violation or whatever the fuck it is. So yeah. Uh, as far as I know, like they exchange the source code. You can play Sonic on this. You can play Sonic. That's like literally everything you need. So yeah, you, you can game on that operating system. You can have WinRAR for free. Wait, is that is that? Oh, it's a trial copy for five. Well, obviously, obviously, if you're using React OS, you're probably using a trial copy of WinRAR. Like, you didn't buy that shit for sure. So. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> So seven, yeah, better seven zip. Honestly, every time I use Windows, I just use this thing instead of WinRAR. Like it supports, like supports RAR format and like a bunch more. Uh, so yeah, React OS, and it's not even written in React JS. It has nothing to do with React JS, by the way. Nano zip. I never heard about Nano zip. To be fair, like all of my knowledge about Windows and applications for Windows is so freaking outdated. Like, don't listen to me. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't used Windows like properly, like daily drive Windows for quite some time already. Uh, so, and maybe never will. Maybe never will. Looking at this current state of Windows, it feels like it's gonna die. Maybe in ten years. So maybe there's no point in even trying to, you know, understand all that stuff. Mm -mm. So maybe at some point it's gonna turn into Linux distro, as I as I predicted some time ago. Um, my last personal Windows version was XP. My last personal version was 8, but then I used Windows 10 for a work for quite some time. It was on a working PC, so I wouldn't say I kind of daily drived it, right? So because I was um, exclusively using Windows at work, and then at home it was Linux. Um, so, and that was my choice. Not really my choice, but because the the, the project was on Windows, right? So... <laughs> Project was a Windows project, so it was just easier to use Windows in that case. Anyways, uh, anyways, anyways, anyways. 
so uh, we managed to parse the entire thing, but to be fair, this output is kind of ass. Honestly, it is kind of ass. Uh, I'd like to see maybe you know pretty printed variant of that, um, or maybe yeah. Let's actually go ahead and implement the dump thing that I wanted to have initially. I think it's going to be very much useful. Um, so where is the ass expression? Right. So let's just do pub fn dump self. And honestly, it will be nice to have like a level at which we are, right? So this is going to be level use size. Why don't you have like a default things in here? That will be so freaking nice. <laughs> but it's Rust. What did they expect from Rust? Okay. Self uh, atom. So self atom name. Uh, and the first thing we have to do, we have to um, indent it a little bit. Yeah, so I wanted to do this thing. Uh, I already I already had this kind of situation where I needed to pad something and I don't remember how to do that with the formatting magic so I did this for loop and I never really kind of fixed this. Uh, I think I need to actually go ahead and fix it. So let me find out. So what if I take a look at the format? Uh, so std format. So this is a format function. function. Uh, I think I need a format macro. Uh, format macro. Uh, okay, that's cool. Um, all right, so maybe I'm gonna Google up whatever I have in here. Rust format uh, width. Uh, let's go to Google. How can I uh, zero pad a number by variable amount? Uh, maybe format pad with spaces, right? So that's actually a little bit better. Because it can never, like, I mean, why did you give it second time, stupid Google? Like, mm. I swear to God, Google is so fucking dumb. Uh, okay, so this is good. Uh, so, yeah, we, we can work with that. I suppose we can work with that. And you also can uh, maybe specify this entire thing. So, with, I, I think you can put, like, um variable in there if i'm not mistaken right so you can put like a variable in there but anyway so i'm gonna do the following thing we're gonna do print ln uh, and this is gonna be like this so pad it to the left with spaces i suppose and we have to provide the width and the width in our case is going to be equal to um level right so maybe level multiplied by two um, so, yeah, I guess that's about it. That's about everything we want to have in here. Um, but honestly, I want to actually first print the location, right? So let's put it like that. So this is a name and name is in fact a symbol. Uh, nah, whatever. So let's put it like this. So this is going to be location. Uh, and location is going to be name uh, location. There we go. So then we're going to have a list, uh, right? And the list has two things. It has open parent and items, right? Like so. Uh, and we're going to start with the similar things, so to speak, actually. Um, but location is going to be part of the open uh, parent. I'm not sure if I need padding in this specific case, honestly. I don't think so. Um, I think what we do need in here, um, I think we do need it. Okay, I think we do need it because then um, I can probably say something like list, right? And I'm going to put it like that. Um, all right, so width, lock, open parent, very good. And then I'm going to iterate all of these things uh, like so. And I'm just going to just recursively call dump with a level plus one. So it's a recursive thing in here. All right, so uh, that's pretty cool. So you have to put the percent in there. Yeah, yeah, so thank you so much. I kind of vaguely remember. Uh, so it's one of these like syntaxes, like I learned it once, I solve the problem that I need, and then I never use it, and then I forget it again, and now I have to learn it fucking again. And what's interesting is that I the same situation happens with that feature in C as well. I know that in C you can... Uh, do a similar thing and I can never fucking remember how to do that. Like I learn it from scratch every single goddamn time. It's so annoying. Um, so <laughs> anyways, uh, what do we have in here? So it complains about some shit. Okay, so let's fix that. Uh, okay, so but I'm never actually calling this stuff. So let's go in here and 
sex for dump. I'm gonna start from zero. Boom. Uh, it almost worked, but I forgot some new lines. Is that what happened? Why did you print it like that? Bravo. So this is the location. But then, oh, I, okay, so I probably need to print a name in here then. Yeah. So this is going to be a name. Um, and name is going to be name... Name? <laughs> right. <laughs> um, okay, very funny. Alright, so one, two, but why did it duplicate it? Wait, bro. Um, I suppose this is the location. Uh, yep. So I suppose I probably have to put space in here or so. Like, what the fuck do you want from me? What the fuck? Did, why did it? Oh my god, I, I hate it. I, I fucking hate it. Okay, so where is the format description? Like a proper format description. Uh, STDFMT. Okay, so here it is. Let me find the width. Like, I fucking hate this shit, honestly. Okay. So width 5. Uh, Alright. So, and I have to put X in here. So it has to have something. Um... All right, so maybe, so let's get rid of that, uh, let's get rid of that, let's get rid of that, pad, uh, pad, right, can I do it like that, I think I should be able to do it like that, so pad, nothing, um, pad, nothing, right, and I think that is going to work. Finally, Jesus fucking Christ, holy fuck. Anyways, um, yeah. All right, that's cool. Uh, we can work with that. So something like this. Cool. Um, all right, because I don't want to like put name in here, like so, because name by itself also consumes the, the width, right? So I want it to be like a self-contained thing in here. Um, right, so I want it to be like self-contained. Okay, so now we can do pretty complicated stuff in here, right? So like a lot of nastiness and stuff like that. Uh, right, so 69 for 20, and yeah. So all that is sec- what the fuck is this, bro? Why is it- ah, fuck. Yeah, yeah, so it's just like because of... How can I solve that? That's annoying. And it's because this thing that doesn't look good. You know what I'm talking about? It doesn't look good. And I think Emacs is not gonna format that properly because Emacs being freaking Emacs. I can just swap these things around, sure. I can swap these things around. Not, not a big deal. But I think Emacs is gonna be an ass. It's gonna be huge ass. Well, I mean, these links are working. It's they are not even fucking working anymore. Fuck. Anyways, I, I guess we will have to put up with this kind of stuff. Um, right. I guess we have to put up with that. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Anyways, anyways, anyways. So we we can maybe compute like the maximum out of all of these things, right? And then just like pad things accordingly or something. I don't know. I don't know. That's fine. So the only thing we wanted to do, we wanted to just test our S expression parser. S expression parser. Mm -mm. So let's let's commit that. Right. So we implemented this expression parser. So now we have to integrate that stuff into the uh, into the compiler. Right. So right now our compiler, right, it only understands like symbols, like atoms. Now, in all these places where we expect atom, like symbols, we have to expect uh, straight up sex purse, right? So we have to expect uh, straight up sex purse. And that will take a little bit of a refactoring to do. So let's jump into that. Let's jump to that. But before we jump into that, let me commit what I have. Uh, right. So because I think the thing that we developed in here are pretty important. So here is the uh, rule one one. Oh, it's not really finished. I don't want to commit it yet. Uh, right, so implement sexper. 
we implemented sex for um oh we'll get some subs thank you so much glitched out for uh, tier one subscription thank you thank you thank you with the message so it didn't feels uh that's literally me right now for real for real yeah thank you so much for for the subscription i really appreciate that minor friend minor friend minor friend okay so how we're gonna be integrating all that into the main compiler so i suppose we're gonna start with just replacing uh symbols in here with maybe straight up um sexper right uh a little sore thank you so much for twitch fan description as well thank you thank you thank you right so we're gonna replace it with sexper uh so yeah and we'll see how it goes so this is the case and in case of statements right so statement is either case or a for loop so where do we have these things so here's th this is one statement and uh let me see let me see uh things like that for loop that contains another case this is also statement right so i think within the statements we also should now use uh, expressions instead of single symbols i think that's what needs to happen so in case of the var do i want the variable to be an expression i think i do i think i do want this thing to be an expression sex per actually i want it to be sex per uh instead of set i have not decided actually yet but i think set is going to stay the symbol unless uh, i kind of plan in the future to have the following syntax uh, i'm going to switch to js mode right you may have two for example sets right so you can have parents which is going to be parentheses uh, right and in this case a parenthesis is going to be like this right so th this is the first sort of set and by the way our tokenizer is not going to properly tokenize that so we'll have to fix that <laughs> but i'm going to do that off screen so we're also going to have bits uh, and something like this and for instance i want to iterate over the uh, union of these sets so i think i'm going to introduce at some point the following syntax uh, right so essentially you have several sets and you can basically you know take a union of them right something like this uh maybe a difference between sets also going to be kind of an interesting operation for some situations right but generally it's going to be plus um right but maybe you can say since you're already using s expressions right so since you're already using s expressions uh you probably want to do it like that but here's the thing i'm using s expressions more as tuples so they're not really S expressions, they're more like tuples. So that's what they are. Right. So, and because of that, I, like, I don't want to like really go into that territory where I express expressions like this, right? So for this kind of things, I want to use infix expressions. So, uh, yeah. So because of that, at least for now, this is going to stay simple unless I go into implementing this sort of like syntax. Uh, all right. So. I replaced some of the things in some of the places and that will break shit ton of code. So let's go into compiler assisted refactoring as usual, as usual. All right, so I'm gonna try to compile this entire thing. Wish me luck, chat, wish me luck. Not that many things have broken because we don't even have S expression in here, uh, right? So because we don't even link with sex per module and we don't even import sex per everything from sex per yet. Let's go. And now a little bit more stuff is broken now. Okay, that's cool. Uh, so uh, when I do the entry state, okay. So now the state of the machine. So if I take a look at the definition of the machine, a state of the machine is not necessarily going to be a symbol. It could be sexper. And by the way, tape is also going to be a sequence of sexpers, and the default value also going to be a sequence of sexpers. Right. So storing like actual tuples within the tape. It's kind of an interesting idea, and I want to explore that as well. So uh, let's try to recompile that as well. So what do we have in here? So k is state, and the entry state has to be sexper. Uh, yes, yes, yes. What else do we have in here? So a variable. Uh, so when I'm substituting something, I'm substituting uh, essentially. Ooh. Mm -hmm. So it has to be a symbol, actually. Believe it or not. Mm -mm believe it or not um so here we have a for loop so to be able to 
work with that. So what I'm trying to refactor right now, uh, the code is trying to tell me that what I want is an ability to do things like that, for instance. Right. So imagine I have a set of pairs. Right. And essentially a set of pairs is 0, uh, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, and so on and so forth. And the way I describe this entire thing, the code is trying to tell me that this kind of stuff should be possible. This kind of stuff should be possible, which means that I can maybe like destructurize all of these pairs and use their values for like maybe the state in here and stuff like that. Uh, right. So, and essentially what that means, essentially what that means. Mm. Um, I don't want to go into that territory yet. I want to go into that territory yet. So, because of that, for the for loops, I think I'm going to stay with the symbols. I think I'm going to stay with the symbols. We'll see how it goes. Right. So, we're going to implement this kind of stuff a little bit later. So, I might as well maybe put a to-do in here. Right. So, put a to-do in here. Um, support... Uh, sex purse for var and set for var and set in uh, for loops for var and set in for loops okay so we'll see how it's gonna go so i'm not gonna try to overcomplicate this thing yet all right i'm not gonna try to overcomplicate this thing yet uh so yeah so when i'm doing the substitution I feel like, okay, so the substitution is for the statements, but when we substitute and think, I feel like we also have to substitute the, uh, the S expressions themselves, right? So we kind of need to do this kind of stuff in here. Mm -hmm. So let me go into the sexper, right? Let me go into the sexper uh, and we literally need to add support uh, for this kind of stuff. But in the future, if we're going to be substituting more complex things, we, this symbol has to turn into another S, -S expression. Right. So we'll have to do it like that then at some point. So, and also I'm going to do uh, support uh, symbol, symbol as sexper right support symbol being sexper not begin being yeah being sexper okay so we'll see how it goes um okay so this is not going to be statements it's going to be sexper as well all right so and then here here we sort of kind of perform the substitution right we kind of perform the substitution. Uh, but what we have to do instead, actually, we have to replace this stuff with state substitute um, var symbol, right? And I wonder if we can use a little bit of a Emacs magic in here. Uh, I wonder if it is possible for me. So let me, let me see. I think I should be able to do that. Right. So in here, we're going to take this thing, then I'm going to say substitute uh, var symbol, and boom. Can your ring do that? Can your ring do that? So uh, there's a little bit of what to do in here uh, with the step. Uh, we're not substituting the step, right? We're not substituting the step because... Uh, we need to update the parser to enable that because right now when we try to parse the case we explicitly fail the parsing if it's not one of the errors arrows and i think this is a mistake on the parser's part right so do we have parse step um so let me find this entire thing uh yeah so this is what we're doing here so when we parse the case uh, we explicitly say okay step must be arrows 
But here's the thing, since we're moving towards like variables and substitutions, uh, we don't know if this thing is going to be error or not at the parsing uh, step, at the parsing stage, at the parsing phase. Because of that, I think whether it's error or not has to be checked at the runtime when we are about to execute that thing. Right. So I think we have to replace this entire thing with parse symbol, like so. Uh, right. And in the runtime where we actually trying to interpret them here. So here you see, we put just unreachable if we encounter something that is not error. It, this is because we rely on the parser checking that. But it is not the thing that we have to do. Right. So essentially here we have to like a spit out a legit runtime error. Right. So we have to spit out a legit runtime error. Uh, so how are we going to be doing that? Um, so it's going to be something like error. Um, so step is neither uh, ni neither um, this nor um, this. All right, and in here we can just return an error right away. Uh, right, an error right away. Mm, so we'll get some subs by the way Moses thank you so much for tier 1 and uh, Gamer Soki thank you so much for Twitch Prime as well thank you thank you thank you all right so let me see what we have in here so lock is not available lock is part of the step I suppose right so step uh, lock like so all right substitute um, right so so something uh, something is wrong in here substitute Substitute, substitute, uh -huh. substitute. It didn't even properly done that. Okay, so because uh, now we check whether it's an arrow at runtime, all of that shit doesn't really matter, and we can just go ahead and replace the step like so. All right. So and then we can just like you know put it in here. So all of that becomes very much symmetrical now, and I suppose step has to be like this one. Yeah, this is actually kind of cool. Right, I like that. I like where all of that is going. Uh, right, I like where all of that is going. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. So, when we do this kind of stuff, okay, so here is the case state, right? So, the case state uh, and state name, right? So, we're matching the state. Um, what I'm thinking is we need to we need to have a way to compare um s expressions right whether they're equal or not through maybe we could implement a, uh, like a custom partial equal mm -mm. custom partial equal would be kind of nice um right uh, <clears throat> So substituting arrow, maybe that there is cool shit possible with that. Yeah. So essentially, the cool shit that is possible with that would be, you could store the direction in the um, in the tape. Right. So essentially, imagine the tape that you have, and so maybe it has a bunch of bits. Right. So a bunch of bits like that, uh, and then literally an arrow in here. And you are located somewhere like here, and you are at the state i, right? And I don't know. Essentially, what you can do, you can have a, a set called arrow, uh, which is either like these two things, and then you can say for a in arrow, um, if you are in a state i and you read a, you don't do anything with that, and you move in the uh, in the direction where it is and you switch maybe to to something like to s right so essentially you can kind of read the direction where you have to move from the tape itself so this is basically what i had uh, at the back of my head right so this is what i'm thinking that you'll be able to store that direction within the tape uh, and then use that direction to move somewhere uh, and that doesn't really extend the Turing machine that much. You could could have implemented that with a regular Turing machine without this preprocessor, but I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, reverse direction. Yeah, maybe it would be kind of cool to have some way to take an opposite thing or something. I don't know. Um, yes, yes, yes. So maybe you would replace it with like underscore to just move it out. 
so to speak, to null it out, so to speak. Uh, okay, so we need a way to compare S expressions. So we can't really slap partial uh, equal on that, because partial equal is not properly implemented for symbol, right? So, in fact, uh, comparing the symbols is not really correct. So, uh, I kind of want to have a custom equals. All right, I kind of want to have a custom equal, but I'm really not sure. So, is that a good idea to implement a custom partial equal for symbol which ignores the location? So, that's what I'm thinking. Is that a good idea, generally? So, um, it's kind of difficult for me to say, right? Because, um, um, is there any situations when I need to compare two symbols and to make sure that they are located at the same place? Usually when I'm comparing symbols, I only care about the, them having the same name, right? Um, and also in here, it's kind of weird, um, right? So in here, it's kind of weird, because um, here I even have to ignore this entire thing. So it's kind of bizarre. Mm -mm. So let's actually, I, I want to have a separate function for that. We're, we're going to call it matches. Uh, it's going to be self. And um, so this one's going to be other uh, sex per. It's going to return boolean. So we're going to match self. Um, so, and we're only going to match them if they are the same type. So maybe I can do something like this, self and other. Uh, right, if they are self atom um, name one, uh, so this has to be something like this, maybe name, uh, name one. Mm -mm. And here we're gonna have, uh, I need to copy paste it, Jesus Christ, Emx. Okay, so name two. Uh -huh. All right, and we instantly return name one, name equal, name to name okay so that's cool so here another thing we have a list right so this is a list and in here we only care about the items right so items items one uh, don't care about anything else items items two don't care about anything else right and in here what we have to do we have to check whether the items one um length is equal to items to items to length if they're not equal if they're not equal right away we maybe return uh false or maybe it would be nice to yeah so let's actually return false okay cool um next thing i'm going to be iterating the index in so you could probably do something like items one, uh, iter, zip, items two, right? So, and then uh, essentially um, a, b, in, and then you can check if a matches b, doesn't match, in fact, you instantly return false. Uh, and at the end in here, you return true, something like this. Something like this, something like this. Okay, so let's go to the compilation errors. Uh, Emacs, come on, don't disappoint me. So what you don't like in here, so this thing has to be, um, yeah, th that's kind of weird. Why did I put this thing in here? All right, so what else do we have? Uh, do, do you just want eater? Do you just want two eaters in here? That's probably what you want. Yeah, that's what you want. Okay, so essentially what we have, I want to do case state matches state. So that's what I want to re replace it with, right? Uh, like this. And case read matches read. So that's the second thing. So if these two things match each other, each other, uh, that should work now. That should actually work. So it wants to be uh, a point, I suppose. Right, there we go. Uh, symbol. Both of these things are symbol. Oh, okay. So that means now these things has to be sexpers instead of symbols. Sexper. All right. What else do we have? Uh, and then we return uh, a bunch of symbols, but those things have to be sexpers. So we are updating our code 
with Sexper. All right, so yeah, this one is interesting because now step is uh, an expression. So that means at the runtime, what we have to do, we have to match whether it's an atom or not. So I wonder how easy we can do that. So we can say that it's a sexper atom with the name of this shit. Yeah. So that's a little bit of a pain in the ass. Mm -mm. So one of the things I'm thinking about is to, for the sex part, uh, implement a special function um, as atom, which takes the self and returns like, yeah, um, option uh, symbol. Right, so first of all, it checks whether it's an atom, uh, right, and if it's an atom, it returns the, uh, the name of the atom. So we can even call it maybe atom name, uh, right. Thank you so much, Avir Stanchev, for Twitch, uh, tier 2 subscription. You, you didn't have to do tier 2, right, so but thank you. Uh, with the message hype, dude. Um, is it hype? I, I hope it is, I don't know. So self and this is going to be self atom name and here I'm going to just return some name. So and in case of a list, all right, uh, we're going to return none, right? So and in here, what we can do, uh, we can do atom name uh, and essentially uh, this is going to be this one is interesting, right? So we probably want to do something like this. If let some uh, step atom name, uh, right? We should be able to now do the following thing. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that means it's an atom. And if it's an atom, we just do that, blah, blah, blah. And everything seems to be working. If it's not an atom, if it's not an atom, we have to be... Uh, we have to report an error uh, saying that um, error step must be an atom uh, right and we can take the location from the step location right so that's the reason why we implemented that uh, fn lock in here so we can report accordingly uh, and then we're going to return error so we have two layers of errors in here. So first of all, step was not an atom. And if it's an, it's an atom, it was not one of the arrows. Right, so there's two situations in here. Um, all right, so let's see how it's gonna work now. So what do we have? Atom name, uh, so what you didn't like, I don't understand. So it's uh, because it's a reference, uh, which I, one of the things I can do, I can actually do something like this. All right, that will automatically be referenced. Okay, so cool. Uh, tape default, tape default, and we cloning it, and we can't clone it because S expression is not clonable. That's fixable uh, relatively easily, so we're going to clone this entire thing now. Uh, right, and what do we have in here? So I'm printing the current state. Ooh, 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 ooh. When I'm printing sexper, when I'm printing sexper like this, I want to actually render it properly. I want to actually render it properly. Because of that, I need to implement the display uh, trait for that. Mm -mm. All right. So let me see. Um, so let's do use, use STD FMT. And we're going to just implement uh and say uh fmt display for sex for nsa there we go so i don't know what kind of method we have to uh, put in here but the compiler is going to tell me uh right so it has to be this shit so we have to put it in here so first we have to accept ourselves then we have to accept the formata uh right then we have to accept uh, then we have to return the result of this entire thing. Uh, the result, and this is where we have to render this entire thing. Okay, so rendering this entire thing is actually pretty straightforward. So if it's an atom, we just render the name. So self atom name simply write um, into f uh, that specific name, but not really we can even do something like this name 
Ah, we have to do it like that. Name, but ignore everything else. So in that, we'll just print that. If it's a list, all right, so this is going to be interesting. So we're going to have items and we don't care about anything else. So we'll have to first write this thing and we're going to enclose it like that. And then for uh, um, items, for item in items, we're going to be doing write um, item into app. But then, depending on whether it's a first element or not the first element, we have to pad it properly. So I think it would be nice to enumerate. Uh, so then we have the this thing. And if i is equal to zero, we just do that. Otherwise, uh, we essentially put a space in here. So on top of that, we're returning the result. So it would be nice to maybe do these kind of things. Uh, right. Uh -huh. So here we don't really have to do anything. Okay, so let's see if it's going to work. Uh, so does it work? Enumerate, not a vector. Let's iterate this thing then. So we'll see what else do we have? Okay, so what you don't like? Name, no field name. Okay, so what I want to print in here, I want to print the state like so. And state does in fact have uh, the display implementation now. So that's pretty cool. Symbol name. Uh, right, so I'm printing... Uh, so symbol is part of the table. Okay, so those are not symbols anymore. Those are sexpers. So and we can quite easily just render this sexper. Uh, we might as well maybe call it something like item or something else. I'm not quite sure, but whatever. Uh, what else do we have in here? So when I'm taking the entry state, I'm actually returning this sexper. Uh, right. So what else? When I'm ah uh, uh -huh. okay 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 so this is cool. So we went to the parsing. When I'm parsing the case, I'm trying to parse only the symbols. It's not the case anymore. We have to parse sexpers, sexper uh, parts like so. Uh -huh. So now it is a little bit more appropriate. Uh, do I use TeamUX? Yes, I do use TeamUX sometimes. Uh, but this is Emacs actually. All right, so a tape is not the right thing. So we have a parse tape. Let me take a look at the parse tape function. And the return symbols, which is not correct, we have to return sexpers. And here we parse in symbols, we have to parse sexpers. Uh, parse, like so. Uh -huh. uh, and maybe I, I should call them sexpers. Honestly, I should probably call this entire thing tape. Uh, like so. All right, so what do we have in here? So when we match things, uh, okay, so we didn't like something about matching. non exhaust ah, that's understandable, right. So for the rest of the patterns in here, uh, we just return always false because they don't match the type. So what you don't, explicit lifetime is expected. So you want me to put NSA in here, I see. Uh, all right, so, okay, substitute, okay, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. So, substitution for the sexper, all right, so, all right. Um, let me match self, uh, so self atom, uh, right, and atom has a certain name. So, uh, we have uh, several situations, if name is equal to the name of the var, uh, it's super easy, we just return the symbol that we need to substitute it with, otherwise we return um, self, essentially. Um, yeah, so self atom name symbol, uh, otherwise we return self. Fair enough. Self uh, list, so this is items and we don't care about everything else. Ooh, this one is interesting. So we are looking at this thing. We're not consuming it, by the way. So that means I, I need to construct a completely new one. I need to construct a new, completely new list, which means I have an opportunity to use map. So I can do iter, then I can map this entire thing. I can take an item and within the item I can substitute. Uh, so we're supposed to actually call substitute with t, but whatever. So var with symbol, right, I'm substituting it like that, and then I collect this entire thing, uh, collect this entire thing into the new items, into the new items, and I actually return self list 
these new items. So that's pretty cool. But I also need to actually have like open pattern in here. So let's put it like that and like maybe swap them around like so. Look at that. Isn't that poggers? So it will know that it's a vector from here, hopefully. Hopefully the type inference will know that this thing must be vector, otherwise this is a shit language. If if this language can't infer that this is a vector, it's a shit language. I'm telling you, bro. I'm fucking telling you, bro. So let's see. Um Okay, it seems to be it actually inferred that. Um, all right, so what did you expect? Expect it, but found sex part. That's really bizarre, honestly. Why did you expect that? Um, so, sex part. That was a close one. <laughs> yeah, true, true, true. Uh, so, what the fuck is going on in here? Like, why it, it expect? Ah, freaking brother. I see. To do fucked me up yet again. Um, so yeah, we have to dereference this into I think. What else do we have in here? Open parent. So what you don't like about open parent because it's a pointer. So let's dereference this into I think. Uh, expect. Oh yeah, freaking brev, brev, brev. Uh, all right, whatever. Uh, okay, self. Move a curse. Freaking clone it then. Wait, this shit is not clonable, right? It is clonable. Just, just freaking clone it, bro. Okay, so what do we have in here? So entry state. Um, I suppose we have to clone it, yeah. That's true. Uh, okay, so what else do we have? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Look at this error reporting. Look at this fucking error reporting. How somebody spent time fucking writing a renderer for this shit. Holy fuck. <laughs> this is what Rust Foundation used Mozilla Foundation money for, just to implement that. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um. This is art. This is a freaking art. So people laugh at programmers' art. Programmers' art look like this. I'm telling you. Mm -mm. I'm freaking telling you. So what the hell is going on here? So why it doesn't work? Um, so cannot move out of the self state. Um, so I guess. So that means we have to do it like that then, because substitute will uh, like create a completely new thing instead. So it doesn't matter. All right, so are you fine now? Uh, so here, yeah, so this, all of that stuff has to be cloned. Uh, money well spent, money well spent indeed. Um, okay, so, so match state. Uh, so what you don't like, move a curse. When I'm matching certain things, like well, this is the function that matches stuff. Why I'm not accepting that stuff by the pointer, honestly? I think I should accept them by, by the pointer, by the reference, I'm sorry. Uh, right, so I think that makes sense. Uh, all right, so match state, yeah. When in doubt, clone it, yeah, exactly. Wait, what the fuck? I just finished refactoring. So, and by the way, dump is not used anymore. Um, I'm not sure if I want to keep it. It's kind of useless. It doesn't even look that good. Honestly. It doesn't even fucking look that good. Fuck that. Okay, so... Anyways, um, yeah. So there's a bunch of things in here. So pick symbol is not used in some places. That's fine. So here we're going to just do print ln uh, sexper because it's debuggable. So we're going to just print it like that. Uh, yep. All right. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, so we refactored this shit around. So using compiler acid refactoring, I want to test how, if I didn't break any of the existing stuff, right? I want to test that first. So we're going to go with the tool. Huh? And, uh, so we're going to start with the increment example. I'm going to start with the even bits. Oh my God. So I don't know how to organize my things, honestly. Uh, okay, so even bits. 
All right, so that, that's fair. So this is the bits of the uh, of the number that we try to increment, and it's a least significant bit, so it just replaced this thing with one and stopped. So that's fair. That didn't break. So what about odd bits? And for the odd bits, right, so you had this sort of odd bits, it actually filled all of the ones with zeros, then it reached the first zero and replaced it with one, and that effectively in uh, like incremented this entire thing. So that seems to be working. So, okay, let's try the balance in parentheses, right? So, so we're gonna have zero two parents. Uh, so the program balanced and zero two parents. Um, so parents tape. Okay, unknown keyword. All right, this is already interesting. This is already interesting. And this is because our parser does not properly parses these things. Uh, right, so it's kind of interesting. It's kind of interesting. I wonder if I can quickly implement that. Mm. So this is a parser problem. Um, okay, so parent literals, uh, and this is gonna be tape. So essentially, let's have something like this and try to uh, tokenize that. It's going to be pretty bad. Uh, test lexa um, parent literals. Yeah, look at that. So it, it literally split them into separate tokens, which we don't really want to do. Right, which we don't really want to do. Uh, we can use brackets, but in the future, I want to use brackets for something else. I want to support these kind of things. So I want th these things to be recognized as a uh, as separate symbols so I can have like pretty much anything between these quotes if you know what I mean so we can also put JS mode in here so okay let's go into the Lexa uh, let's go into the Lexa and how we're gonna be doing all of that okay so chop the symbol so this is the main sort of workhorse of this thing so we stripping off white spaces and comments, that's understandable. If after that the source is empty, we just return none, that's understandable. So here we have, uh, we get the location of the current thing. If one of these things are special, we just chop off this thing as a separate uh, token. If none of these things were special, we stripping off everything until we encounter white space or a special character. Right, so that's what we're doing here. Okay, but another thing we can do in here, in fact, is check if we start with um, quote, right? So if self source uh, starts with, right, if it starts with a quote, uh, this is basically where we can start our thing. So uh, we're gonna start with the source. Mm, um, let me let me see source char indices all right so we're gonna start with the char indices and this is gonna be mutable char indices like so um so afterwards i want to skip one thing in here all right so how i'm going to say that i'm gonna just do uh, next and i kind of want to unwrap that Right, so because we already checked that it starts with a quote, so it's definitely not gonna fail. And I wanna advance, uh, advance location, right? So I'm advancing location afterwards. Advance location accepts the character and it needs the character so it can decide whether to update new line or not. Okay, after that, I'm doing the following thing. Um, I'm continuing... <clears throat> the following stuff while sum uh, x I do char so this is gonna be more like um, you know I but I'm not sure if I care about I so I'm gonna be skipping that char indices next uh, right and what I'm doing I'm constantly sort of like updating the uh, the location so if x is equal to uh, that uh, I must break out of that thing I must break out of that thing um, so and now I need to figure out the end of this entire story so the end of this entire story is gonna be basically next uh, but I only care about the index I only care about the index but we can also reach the end of this entire thing, so I need to unwrap uh, this stuff. 
I need to unwrap this stuff and replace it with self source length. So this is sort of the last thing and this is the end. And essentially uh, the result is going to be name equal self source uh, end. So then we chopping off whatever we've got in here uh, is going to be, of course, this is that self uh, starting from end until the end. And we simply return uh, symbol name location like so. So and I think that's how we can chop off that sort of literal. We do not support escaping in here, but maybe we, this is something that we'll do. Uh, so implement uh, escaping inside of uh, symbol literals. Yeah. All right. So let's see if it's going to compile. Um, if it's going to work or not. Char indices. So advanced look yeah that's fair how do you take only the second thing is that how we do that i don't remember what was that uh who remembers how to take the um, nth uh nth one is that something within the uh the tuple dude you're wasting my time. You're wasting my time way too many times already. It's just like, it's not even fucking funny, dude. So, and maybe one. Okay, that works. Um, so this is source. All right, so this one has to be returned. Uh, okay, so that seems to be working. Okay, that's cool. Uh, <clears throat> so... Um, yeah, so let's see if that, yeah, that worked, right? So it also includes quotes themselves, right? It also includes quotes themselves. So then, um, essentially they're separate from these kind of things. Yeah, this is so cool. Look at that. Right. So Lexer works correctly. Lexer works correctly. We can now also, uh, use a sex on that. Uh, oh my God. Uh, sexper uh, right and I think it yeah parsed it correctly so the first name is that and the other name uh, it also includes quotes it, it's kind of important for this kind of thing all right so uh, let me let me see um, so is the balance yeah so okay so that fixed the balancing example and in this case they are balanced uh, yeah they are in fact balanced so that's pretty cool all right so we even updated the um, the Lexa and stuff like that. So balancing actually works. And the thing I want to check now is whether I can um, use pairs. I think that the time has come to implement something cool with pairs. Uh, reverse uh, pairs. So we're going to start with um, the problem. So let's imagine that we have the, fo uh, the, following, um, the following tape which consists of the pairs and the pairs will consist of the bits, I suppose. Right. So I wonder how easy it's going to be to do that for us, but maybe that's going to be fine. So zero, um, zero, one, uh, one, two. So they're not going to be bits, right? <laughs> two, three, uh, and yeah, like this. And then we're going to end this stuff like this, right? Okay. So we are starting in a state um swap and in a step swap for a in bits where bits is zero one uh, and for b in bits if you encounter a and b uh, you swap them to b a uh, you move to the right and you stay in a swap that's the first rule uh, right, so that's the first rule, and it actually automatically should generate four rules, right? So because it's a combinatorial thing. Okay, if being in a swap state, I encounter this thing, I just leave it as it is, I move to the right, and I just hold. So what this program will do, it's supposed to iterate through each individual pair and swap its element. If we implemented everything correctly, this is what this program is going to do. I think I think it's kind of cool. I think it's kind of cool. Um, right, let's go ahead and do that. So I need to um, so pairs tape. 
I'm actually a little bit nervous, so I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. Uh, we'll see, we'll see. I'm gonna just double check everything, so I'm gonna rebuild all of that. Uh, right. So, uh, Baron, Literals, Reverse Pairs, and we have a Pairs type. Okay. So, Build, Tula, uh, Reverse Pairs, and then we have Pairs, uh, Pairs Tape. Okay, so what do we have in here? Expected, okay, okay, so that's fine. Everything's fine, everything's fine. And nothing really happened. It didn't even... Okay, so these are not bits. These are numbers, I think. So let's call them numbers. Um, so two, three. So we need to have two, three. So numbers. I mean, I'm a little bit dumb today. Uh, right, and that didn't work, surprisingly, because it didn't match it. Um, that didn't match it. It halted because it didn't think that it actually found anything in here. So that's cool. Uh, all right. So thank you so much, Zerjual LP, for uh, Twitch Fans Exhibition. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, three months. What should I say here? You're making great content, by the way. Th uh, thank you. Thank you for saying that. Uh, right. So I don't really know what the fuck is going on in here. Uh, I don't really know. Um, probably we didn't match that stuff. So we need to go into the source code and see uh, if the match is working. Match. So what is it? Uh-huh. So matches. Mm -hmm. So we're checking this kind of stuff. And then if it doesn't match. So matching here is fine. Matching here is fine. Uh, so the Tula... So match state. How do we match all of that stuff? Mm -hmm. But honestly, I don't even know how to debug that, right? So I don't really know how to debug that. Uh, so I want to kind of make a small break chat because I need to think about that. So let's make a small break. Um, all right, so uh, the problem is probably somewhere the, with the match state. It's definitely somewhere with the match state. So, and how do we do match state? We actually do that recursively. Um, so let me maybe find um, what kind of things we do in here. So if I just try to trace match state, I think it's not going to be a great idea, honestly. Um, right, so I can do state, which is going to be just state, and then uh, read, which is going to be just read. But since it's a recursive thing, I think it's not going to be that particularly useful. Um, right, because it's, a, yeah, there's something, something wrong is here. Um, when we're doing this kind of thing, so we're substituting some of this stuff. Um, yeah, okay, so let's try to trace this thing and see how it's gonna go uh right so let's rebuild this entire stuff first let's rebuild um so this has to be semicolon of course it has to be a semicolon okay um so yeah it didn't really give us any useful information or anything like that but i mean it's a little bit of a useful information swap read uh huh. So this is the current sort of state that we had in here, right? So this is the current state. We have a state swap, and we're reading a pair zero one. That is fair. That is fair. Okay. So what we are actually interested in is specific cases, right? Um, maybe what I want to do in here is. Okay, match state. So what we're trying to match it against? What we're trying to match it against? And I think this is where it will give us um, a lot of useful information. Um, so let's call it case. Uh, state is going to be case state and um, a read is going to be case read. All right, so let's see. Let's go. Okay. Oh, what? What the fuck is... Okay. So this is what we try... We instantly see a problem. We... 
What the fuck is this shit? So the, the substitution is wrong. We're trying to like match it against this kind of stuff, right? So we're trying to match it against this kind of stuff. Okay, so let's take a look at the substitution then. Um, so what is happening with the substitution? Um, when I do the substitution, um, I get the sets. Uh -huh. So this is a symbol and I substitute the body. Body is another statement. So, okay, I have a bar, I have a symbol. So that's what I have to substitute it with. That's what I have to substitute it with. Uh, all right, so let me find a fan substitute. Uh, and in case of this kind of stuff, right? So it's the var symbol, uh, substitute var symbol. That's totally fine. We keep the variable the same, but we allow... Okay, so there's something wrong in here, by the way. There's something wrong in here. So we are allowing to substitute the set. So I, I think I'm not going to uh, go with allowing substituting the sets. But I'm going to put it to do. Allow substitute... Uh, substituting the sets, right? So that's one of the things we want to be uh, want to be able to do, uh, right? And then we substitute the body in here, and that recursively goes down. And the only thing that we might be fucked up in is in here. What is this English? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, so let me try to recompile this entire stuff. Maybe that's what caused all of that. Nah, that, that's not what caused all that. So let's take a look at S expressions. Substitutes. When I'm substituting var and symbol. Okay, so that kind of makes sense. Atom does make sense. Um, if, mm -mm, if the atom name name matches the variable that i'm trying to substitute i have to use that symbol so i'm just doing it like that makes sense makes total sense um and in here i have just items i i'm iterating them i'm substituting var symbol and i'm collecting all that and just like okay i went through the entirety of the code i didn't see any errors in the implementation but i have no idea why it behaves like that and why does it substitute this shit like that that doesn't make any sense to me honestly that doesn't make any freaking sense um so this is what we're trying to compare it with it's just like what the fuck bro like how did set sneak into here a specific set uh right how did it sneak into there that is so bizarre um all right so let me take a look at the reverse pair so a and b all right so yeah that makes sense that really makes sense um hmm. okay so uh, mm, 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 tula i don't even know where to start with so I may try to maybe um, just see. So this is a var and this is this specific symbol. Uh, so when I got the set, can I just print uh, the specific symbols in here? Symbols, because I just want to take a look at them. Are they the symbols I think they are? Okay, so yeah, so they are zero, one, two three so here they are here are the symbols that is fair uh then when i'm iterating these kind of things when i'm iterating these kind of things uh i want to take a look at the symbol within this stuff right so mm -hmm. yeah so i'm just like iterating Ooh. That is weird, but uh, this is because it's nested, right? So, yeah, yeah, so zero, yeah, so that makes sense. Zero, zero, one, two, three, one, zero, one, two, three, two, zero, one, two, three, three, zero, one, two, three, because it's it's nested, right? So it's a nested loop. So iteration actually happens correctly in here. Iteration actually happens correctly in here. Something wrong happens in the body substitute, and maybe that's what we have to do in here. 
So subst subs body. Let's call it subs body. Uh, right. So we substituted the body, um, and let's call it subs body. Uh, and maybe this is what I want to print in here, just to see what we managed to substitute it with. Subs body. Uh, all right. So that's one way to maybe debug that. I, yeah, it's too much. It doesn't really give me like that much of a useful information. Um, right. It tried to substitute some things. Um, all right. It's within the var. It's within the var. And then we have a case. Uh huh. List. So where is the atom symbol A? It didn't perform the substitution correctly, like at all. Though interestingly, if I take a look at the the pairs tape, actually reverse pairs. So it does have A and B in here. Hmm. Something is with substitution. Something must be with the substitution, but I can't see that. Like, where is the error? Where is the error? So it would be maybe nice to, if we could properly print the this thing. Right, maybe we need to implement the display uh, trait for the statements. Maybe that's one of the things we have to do, just display straight for the statements and that will print it properly so we can see what actual substitutions are happening there. So right now, if I try to build this entire thing, it is not going to work as you can see. Right. Okay, so that sounds like a cool idea. So statement, uh, right, so we're gonna go, do we have FMT? Actually, yeah, so let's go ahead and just implement this entire thing, FMT. Uh, so implement uh, NSA fmt display for statement uh, nsa like so so let's take a look at the compilation errors uh so it has to be self yeah that's true so what else do we have in here so uh it has to be this kind of thing all right so let me put it like that uh f and in here what do we have um fmt result right so we've got that and this is fmt for matter uh -huh, like so and so how we're gonna approach this entire thing so a single statement uh so self self case and we get in the case in here actually a single case how we're gonna be formatting this entire stuff uh, we're going to do write f and here essentially what we have to do um, let me see so we need to grab all of these sexpers so i might as well just do case uh, state read write step next and then i can just put them in here you can you can't see that uh, state read write step next so maybe it makes sense to actually put the stuff in here uh, then we can do self for uh, all right and it's gonna be var set set and body uh, that's pretty cool so we're gonna do write f uh, for var in set uh, and then i suppose we have to print the body all right so this one has to be something like this uh, and i wonder if i can just do it like that so for now it's going to work, though it's going to be a little bit weird later when we're going to implement more complicated syntax for the statements, but that's fine. Uh, symbol, yeah, symbols don't really work that well. Var um, name set set name. Okay, are you ready? All right. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That doesn't make any fucking sense, honestly. That doesn't make any fucking sense. So, original statement was what? Um, payers. There's some very, very dumb mistake somewhere. Yeah, I can, I can even feel it. I can literally feel the dumb mistake somewhere. Okay, so we had this kind of thing. It got replaced 
by this thing. Right, so we stripped off one layer of 4a in numbers, right? And we did it by taking all of the elements in numbers and replacing a occurrences of a with one of the numbers. And what we ended up with is replacing this element and this element with literally the name numbers out of all things. Why that single substitution happened like that? That doesn't make any fucking sense. Like, what the fuck? Excuse me. This is so fucking dumb. <laughs> um, yep. And it, it replaced... What's funny is that it replaced literally B's when it's supposed to replace A's. It's supposed to pick up A's, but it replaced B's instead. Holy shit. <laughs> what the fuck uh so that is so freaking bad why borrow checker didn't you know help me with this kind of situation like what the fuck <laughs> i've never seen such a bizarre situation okay so when i'm doing the substitution it, it looks like so maybe reads and writes are fucked up but not, not really right ah okay Oh fuck. Oh sh oh fuck. Because this thing over Okay. Oof. The worst thing about Rust, honestly, is not the borrow checker. So I'm gonna just tell you a hot take. A huge hot take. So the worst thing about Rust is not the borrow checker in its anal rules or, or anything like that. You can get rid of them. The worst thing is allowing shadow in the variables. You, you just see that. So this thing just overshadowed this thing. And I didn't even notice that there is a bug in there. I didn't even notice that. And I spent so much freaking time debugging that. How is that supposed to help with the, you know, finding bugs and stuff like that? What if because of this kind of bug you introduced a vulnerability? How, how we can even call it safe language at this point? But it's actually memory safe language, so is it supposed to be prevent the memory bugs? <laughs> skill issue, yeah, sure, sure. Maybe it's a skill issue, I don't fucking know. But so this is already not the first time when shadowing the variables actually fucked me in the ass roll. Uh, meanwhile, Zeke throwing errors when shadowed, fucking based, honestly. <laughs> fucking based. Mm -mm. Uh, and now your plane just crashed exactly um okay so uh, oh fucking no man oh fucking okay so i'm gonna call it something like a four var and this one's gonna be four set four set 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 okay so allow substitution the set. So in essentially what I want to do in here, I want to substitute var with the symbol. Um, right, and then here we're going to be doing var uh, for var. Uh, and this is going to be set for set. And we can just put it in here. Um, <clears throat> cargo could, maybe cargo clip could have printed that. So like... <laughs> Anyway, whatever. I'm I, I'm kind of tired ranting today, but it's just like it sounds like a you know, patchwork. Anyways, um, yeah, and that literally worked. So we need to get rid of the tracing. We need to get rid of the tracing super quick. Uh, print. Where do we have a print line? So we don't need that. Where is another print line? We don't need that. Okay, so let's take a look again at the program that we have in here. Uh, let's take a look at the program again. So we have a tape with pairs. We have a tape with pairs. We have a program reverse pairs. So what it does, what it does. So for each A in numbers and each B in numbers, so if we encounter A and B, we replace it with B and A, we move to the right stain in a swap. As soon as we encounter the delimiter, we halt. Right, so that's the program in here. That's the program in here. And if we try to run this thing, uh, so we were in swap, we were pointing at this thing. 
we replace this thing with this thing which is swapped then we we're looking at this thing uh right we replace it with this thing then we we're looking at this thing we replace it with this thing then we encounter this thing uh we leave it as this we move to the right and we halt it so you see it added another delimiter here and this is because the tape automatically filled with the last uh, s expression uh to the infinity right so uh it worked so we introduced complex expressions we introduced s expressions and now it is possible to write programs like that where you have fixed pairs right you iterate through each individual pair and you swap it and it's as easy as uh, actually that uh where is the reverse pair so that's pretty cool um so the tape now is the tape of its expressions yes because it's equivalent to the tape of uh symbols so i could have replaced this thing with uh, the symbols that look like this right i could have replaced it with this and then wrote manually each individual rule swap zero one one zero swap zero 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 swap one two to one and so on and so forth and it would be equivalent it would be equivalent tape of s expressions is equivalent to tape of symbols it's just a little bit easier to work uh work with for humans if you know what i mean so it's it's like equivalent it just allows you to sort of destructurize the symbols so that's the point of s expressions to be able to destructurize the symbols uh right and if you just use the symbols like that we just like it would be the same but without destructurization so because of that it's kind of like still equivalent um to that uh it's kind of equivalent to that and to be fair i think calling them s expressions is not particularly correct i think they have to be called tuples honestly uh i think they have to be called tuples or at least maybe you know what um but maybe it's fine maybe it's fine so they're more like tuple to be fair they're more like tuple um so that's pretty cool and that will make it a little bit more powerful and you can use as expressions also for the state again uh let's write a very interesting tape um so let me let me do something like this um we can we can even probably start with the rule 110 right as a originally described the rule 110 let me take a look at the rule 110 and see if it's going to be if it's going to actually work i think it will already work in all fairness i'm pretty sure it will work yeah it will work uh rule 110 interior machine yeah, yeah, yeah exactly so we're going to be doing rule 110 interior machine let's go ahead and re-implement rule 110 from scratch yet again just to see like uh you know how it's gonna work and stuff uh i'm gonna like literally remove all of that right and we're gonna start over so we um know exactly what each individual instruction does right so we start at this first symbol so we're gonna denote this state as an entry we encounter delimiter we don't do anything with that delimiter we move to the right and we switch to state that i would like to call i uh, right, so this is going to be the case. So we are in here in a state I. In a state I, uh, we, first of all, we have uh, two things in here, right? So we have bits, actually one thing. So we have bits in here. So for A in bits, uh, if in state I, I encounter a bit, right? I leave it as it is, I move to the right and I switch to the state I A, right? So that's the first thing I can do. So I basically collected uh, the bit and store it within the state. We can already test how this entire shit is going to work. Uh, so I'm going to take Tula. Uh, is it, where is it? Uh, build Tula. Uh, rule 110 Tula, rule 110 tape. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, look at that. Entry state, encounter delimiter, move to the right switch to i then uh, in i state encounter zero switch to i zero if in the tape we had one 
we would have switched to i1. So as using S expressions instead of the symbols allows us to actually store information within the state. Again, it is still equivalent to just symbols. Uh, we could have just written uh, st like in instead of states i0, something like uh, like underscore zero. And, but then we'll have to manually write all the possible combinations. The need for S expressions is to uh, allow this combinatorial generation of the rules automatically. So that's kind of the point, but it's still equivalent to the symbols. That's what's cool about this entire idea. Uh, right, so that's what's cool about this entire idea. Okay, so we need to, since we're doing rule, rule 110, we need a window of three bits. So for each A in bits, for each B in bits, when you are in a state IA and you encounter B, you leave that B as it is, you move to the right, but you switch into the state uh, I, A, B. We collected the second bit in here. So we are collecting bits into the state. We're collecting bits into the state. So maybe, maybe it would make sense to actually maybe format these things like that. Uh, right. So then for A in bits, for uh, B in bits, for C in bits, uh, if you are in a state I, A, B, and you encounter C, we're going to leave it as it is. But then, right, so we basically collected the window of three. We basically collected the window of three, but we are replacing the window at the center. So we need to move our head to the left now. Right. And I'm going to switch to a special state called R, which is a lookup state for the, uh, for the rule 110. Right. So this is with R, A, B, C. Uh, right. So, and as you can see, uh, we collected the window of three bits and it switched back, right? So now we're pointing at this thing and we are in this state, right? Uh, so, and we actually basically generate rules for all of the possible combinations of bits automatically. So that's the point of these four loops, right? That's the point of these four loops. Uh, then uh, let's actually go back into zero, zero. There we go. So that's basically what we have in here. Let's go ahead and implement a table that generates this thing. So if you are um, in a state R000, so case, and it doesn't really matter what you encounter in there, actually. So we can put underscore in here, uh, right? And we can say uh, in bits, uh, we are going to replace that thing with zero, right? And we're gonna switch it, to go to the right, and we're basically going to switch to the state i, which preserves these last two bits in here. Uh, right. So we're going to repeat this entire process yet again. We're going to repeat this entire process yet again. And obviously, we can actually now hard code this entire table. Uh, right. So let's quickly do that. So one, uh, one, uh, one, one, one. Um, right. So did I do like a one? One, 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 and then one, 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 one. Uh, right, so, and in here, I'm gonna replace this stuff with that, and mm -hmm. so, and in here, if I remember correctly. This is going to be one, and this is going to be. This is the table for rule one one one. All right, so we're always ignoring that last thing. We're always ignoring that last thing. Okay, so now it's going to go for a little bit longer. Yeah, it is go. It, it's actually kind of stopped. Aha. Uh -huh. So I suppose. Hmm. That's very interesting. Um, let me see. Let me get rid of these rules. I think I did a little bit of a fucky wacky. Uh, right. So I'm going to replace this stuff with that. So then I'm going into this thing. So, but effectively, yeah, I need to switch to that one. It's kind of weird. Did I fuck up something? I feel like I fucked up something, but I'm not really sure what exactly. Ah, too fast. Right, let me see. Uh, mm. Mm, I see. I kind of need to do two steps now. 
Yeah. I'm gonna need to do two steps. Um, so after that, I replaced it, I moved to the right. Maybe I just have to leave one in here only, right? So that's what I have to do. So the last one. Actually, no. Uh, I think I have to use this one then. Yeah. Let's let's try this one. Yeah, that's a little better. That's a little better. So we did one single iteration and we reached this thing. While being in this state, right, with these two things, so we reached the uh, delimiter. By the way, it would be kind of nice to only print at certain situations. Uh, right, it would be kind of nice to print, to be able to print at certain situations. Mm. So obviously we have this kind of state, which can be denoted as something like this. All right, so case I, A and B, um, encounter delimiter. We're going to leave the delim delimiter as it is. And let's actually go into the reset state. Or maybe we can call it something like print state. That's a very cool idea. Let's call it a print state. And in a print state, we can actually encounter maybe whatever. Uh, hmm. You know what I'm thinking? Let's introduce a couple of more commands for this step. So let's introduce dot, which is basically don't move anywhere, stay, right? And for the print, uh, if you we encounter that, let's introduce exclamation mark that prints the state of the tape so we're going to disable tracing of the state of the tape and this is going to be a special command that prints this entire thing uh, and then what we're going to be doing i guess we're going to be resetting this entire thing right so yeah basically so and in the reset right in the reset Implementing Ioma Net for Tula. Yeah, that's basically what we're doing. <laughs> that's basically what we're doing. Um, in the reset, but then we have to... Okay, let's introduce something like reset 1, uh, where we encounter this entire thing. We're going to move to the left, and we switch into the actual reset. Uh, right. So, and in case of a reset, right, for A in bits, for A in bits, uh, then we encounter A and A, we switch back to this thing and we doing it like that. Then while being in the reset, we encounter this entire thing. Uh, right, we encounter this entire thing. We, I guess, stay and we switching back to the entry. Right, so, and by switching back to the entry, uh, we essentially gonna, though honestly, the way we can do that, we can just go, there and switch to i right switch to i so that's basically going to perform all that so obviously it's not going to work right away because we have yeah yeah so a step is uh, neither left or right because now we introduce these kind of things so it's not a step anymore right so it's not a step anymore so it's sort of like an action imperative action that you know the machine can perform outside of the reading and writing memory uh, right, so outside of reading right now. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and introduce that. I think it's going to be interesting. Uh, so, so if we do stay, uh, we literally don't do anything, right? So we literally don't do anything. And exclamation mark is going to be printing the state of the machine. Uh, machine print, yeah. So we print in the machine. And I suppose by default, it would make sense to maybe get rid of the outer printing in here, right? So as you can see here, we're automatically printing. And this is gonna be the way to go in the future because we're gonna write more and more complex program and tracing each individual step for the program is not gonna be feasible, right? So we wanna be able, to, we wanna be more precise in terms of what exactly we're printing. 
And for that specific print, uh, maybe we don't even want to print the head because it's going to add additional padding between the rows. So the rule 110 is not going to look that great anymore, I think. But we'll see. So let's actually give it a try. So let's do build.sh and let's compile. So machine is it's actually self print. Uh, right. So yeah, it seems to be working. Let's go to the example rule 110 and let's just see. Uh, I think it's, can you see that chat? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? All right, so this is precisely what I was talking about. So when I'm printing print, um, let's not print the head, I suppose. I see the triangles exactly. Exactly, exactly, my friend. Exactly, exactly. So I think we're getting the triangles. All right, so let me go to the rule 110. And I actually want to maybe extend the tape a little bit. Let's make the tape a little bit bigger. I think it's going to be beneficial to have the tape a tiny bit bigger. Uh, all right, and let's just run this entire thing. So, yeah. Rule 110. We can make it a little bit more readable, honestly. So let's query replace zero with dot and one with hash and uh, Tula. Um, so we have bits. All right, so we can do things like that. Uh, but here we'll also have to, so do we refer to zero? Yeah. Query zero dot uh, query one with hash. So yeah, the, the cool part of uh, the Turing machine it doesn't care, right? It literally doesn't care, right? So it's just symbols for this thing. Yep. We just proved that Turing machine is Turing complete. <laughs> That's, that's so cool. <laughs> so again, it's basically the original Turing machine, right? I could have implemented all of that thing, all of those things manually, right? I could have implemented all of these things manually. I could have had coded all of these rules. The only thing I implemented, I implemented a simple preprocessor that just on top of this language allows me to generate all of these rules that I would have otherwise had coded myself manually. And that makes programming in this language way easier. Uh, automata running on automata, yeah. So that's so freaking cool that you don't really need much and it's already moving towards being a useful language. Um, so that's, that's so fucking cool. Um, and it's basically already ready, like semantically, right? It can already do some cool things. Uh, I'm going to show you some interesting idea that I've had for this language. So essentially, you may notice that uh, we have these sets, these fixed sets, right? I was thinking, uh, I was theorizing, what if we introduce a little bit of a magic into this, uh, into this machine and have a built-in set integer? built-in set integer so for instance um what if i had uh, a tape where i would have a bunch of integers that look like symbols and stuff like that an integer you can pretend like it contains all of the possible integers it's a set that contains all of the possible integers and now let's define uh, a state like let's imagine that i'm in a state sum right and for instance i encounter an integer Right, how can I say that A is an integer? I can say that for A in integer, right, uh, integer. So in that case, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just say, all right, so I'm gonna leave it as it is, I'm gonna move it to the right, and I'm gonna switch to the state sum A, right? So then in a state sum A, where A is obviously an integer, if I encounter B, where B is obviously also an integer, I'm gonna actually replace it with a plus b 
right which is basically querying the um integer from the set integer which is the sum of these two things and again we can move to the right and move to some other thing like halt right so what's interesting is that that allows me to have pretty useful things i can do mathematical compilation uh, computations and stuff like that and it's still in the spirit of this virtual machine you can still think of it as actually generating rule for each individual integer in that specific set there is a lot of integers and there is a lot of rules but the compiler must do the actual interpreter the interpreter must do some sort of a magic to not actually generate all of the integers but precisely like use whatever values there are in there right so uh, and because of that you can actually have like a useful language like that you can introduce more magical sets like for example real and that way you can have floats and shit well you could probably do piano numbers but i'm talking about actually making this language useful which is kind of dangerous right so you don't really want to take a, like esoteric language and making it useful because that's a huge time sink right <laughs> because you can get nerd snapped really hard and waste a lot of time on imaginary problems but sometimes maybe that's exactly what you want to do who knows Hmm. And by the way, this syntax is S, honestly. Uh, I want to introduce a syntax that allows you to basically collapse this kind of stuff like this. Right, so this is equivalent to two for loops. Um, right. So, and yeah, I really want to explore this idea of this like built in uh, magical infinite sets. Uh, right, so yeah, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. <clears throat> If you make it useful, someone is going to build a production sub website in it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that would be interesting. Like making, and holy shit, imagine making a website using Turing Machine. <laughs> Ooh, uh, I thought I grew out of that phase when I stopped programming in Haskell. Uh, right. So I thought I grew out of that phase. So yeah, anyway, uh, so we implemented um, S expressions for this language and this language becomes more and more useful every day. So another thing that I would like to implement and maybe some sort of a destructuring, right? So, uh, right, so essentially maybe if you have pairs uh, like this, I already demonstrated that, uh, right? So I probably don't, I'm not gonna do it like that. So three, four. I want to be able to do shit like this uh, for A, B in pair, All right? So I want to be able to do shit like that. Um, so this is kind of weird. So is Twitch okay? Okay, whatever. Uh, so yeah, we'll need to implement some sort of a destructuring at some point. And it's not that difficult to do because it's basically power matching. And I already implemented powder matching in knock in one of my other languages, right? So if you never heard about it, so there's this language knock. It's like another esoteric programming language. It's not even programming language. It's a language for substituting symbols and stuff like that. And I already did uh, pattern matching in there. And I can just like take the same idea and apply it in Tula, right? So in that way, I'll be able to do these kind of things. So things can be cool. Uh, right, and for people who are watching on YouTube, I'm gonna actually put this here in the description. So yeah. Anyways, uh, anyways, anyways, anyways. I think today was a pretty productive session. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pixel Doc, for uh, Twitch Panda Gucci with the message Sodin a pogin at Sodin pogin indeed. So yeah, I guess that's it for today. Thanks everyone who's watching right now. I really appreciate that. Have a good one, and I see you all on the next recreation programming session with Amista Azuzin. I love you. Mm-hmm.